Hi friends, good evening and welcome to Beer and Hems. Cheers, my name is Sarah Abu Chakra, and uh, tonight I'm not drinking a beer. I am instead drinking a cranberry citrus sparkling water, unsweetened. And uh, that's my beverage of choice this evening. So feel free to grab your beverage of choice and join me. And we're gonna do a little singing and a little chatting tonight. Last week, if you joined us, we talked about a very famous, probably the most famous Advent carol of all time, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And we talked about that, that ancient text and the O antiphons and what they originally meant in their original Latin and how that worked together to um, create this acronym that when you string it all together means tomorrow I will come or I will come tomorrow, that Jesus is on his way, that has not yet been born into this world. We're thinking of the time um, in this waiting of waiting for this Christ child to be born. Advent is a time of waiting. It's a time of uh, excitement just being on the cusp of the horizon and uh, that we're sitting, the whole world is sitting in darkness and waiting for this beautiful light to enter our world in the form of a baby who is God, who has wrapped himself in human imperfections, in human flesh, and came and dwelled among us. And tonight I'm gonna sing uh, and talk about a hymn that is much more contemporary than um, than O Come, O Come Emmanuel, which dates back to like the fifth century. This was written um, in the late uh, 1800s, early 1900s, probably early 1900s, um, and was an existing tune from France, but the text was written um, sometime in the early 1900s. I should check that out. Uh, the text was written in 1928, so uh, just before you know, those roaring 20s, just before the Great Depression uh, in America. This is uh, written by uh, an author in, in England, set to a French carol. And um, just a little bit about the, the hymn. People Look East first appeared in the Oxford Book of Carols in 1928. The lively tune, a traditional French carol, Be Saint-Saint, which earlier appeared with the anonymous text, Shepherds, Shake Off Your Drowsy Sleep, provides a festive setting for this wonderful Advent text. In the last 40 years, this hymn has gained increasing popularity, as is evidenced by its appearance in a number of hymnals in the United States. There are some key images in this hymn. People look east, is the direction of the rising sun. And in the history of Christianity, the direction of the coming of the Messiah. In stanza two, the bare earth is waiting for the seed that will flourish in the reign of the promised one. In stanza three, the stars that guided the Magi shaped the bowl of the heavens, giving signs of hope beyond the frosty weather. The angel song in stanza four sets every peak and every valley humming an oblique reference to Isaiah 40, chapter four, which says every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. Except for one word that changes in the last two lines of each stanza, the poem and its musical setting Give the sense of a refrain, love, in turn, is defined as a guest, rose, a star, and Lord. This joyful Advent hymn has the spirit of a Christmas carol, but with an imaginative Advent text. Singing this carol is indeed one way to prepare both our homes and hearts for the coming of the Savior. 
you know, one of my favorite parts of Advent is that it's not quite the celebration yet that we're sitting and we're waiting with anticipation in our hearts. And um, it makes me think of, it makes me think of in uh, Romans chapter eight, where it says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up until this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have been the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to the sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the season of waiting, the whole earth is groaning inwardly. And we are groaning inwardly, I believe, as Christians, as a society, as a world, for that second coming of Christ. So in that way, I think of Advent as somewhat of a metaphor for, you know, we're waiting and uh, trudging along, doing our Christmas shopping, doing all the stressful things that um, lead up to Christmas, making sure everything's perfect, working, if you're a music director or a pastor or you're in ministry, it, it usually means you, it's, you're the busiest and most stressed out of your whole year. And it, that to me is uh, somewhat of a metaphor for us living our lives and trudging along and working and laboring in love and waiting for the time when Christ return. So I'd like to just read the text first to People Look East. I think the poetry is so lovely. People, look east. The time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows, be glad, though earth is bare, one more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, the seed to nourish, that in a course, that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today, love the rose is on the way. Birds, though you long have ceased to build, guard the nest that must be filled. Even the hour when wings are frozen, God for fledgling time has chosen. People look east and sing today. Love the bird is on the way. Stars, keep the watch. When night is dim, one more light the bowl shall brim. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today. Love, the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today, love, the Lord is on the way. The poetry and the symbolism in this hymn are, uh, in my opinion, quite unique, that we get these words to describe Jesus Christ, the Lord who is coming to be born as love the guest, love the bird, love 
the star, love the Lord, love the rose. And um, some of these images are not unusual uh, imagery for the Christ child. Uh, Jesus is referred to as, as the rose that is er, ever blooming. Uh, Lo, er, er, a rose, air er blooming. Um, and so the text was written to provide a new Advent text for an existing carol tune, that Besse song that I mentioned earlier. Here it's named for the city in eastern France where it originated, Besançon. The author has imaginatively expressed the cosmic implications of Christ's coming by addressing each stanza to a part of creation. So this reminds me of the, uh, the hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful, All Creatures Great and Small, All Things Wise and Wonderful, The Lord God Made Them All. And that all of creation is groaning as we wait for the Lord. So here is People Look East. If this is a hymn that you know, um, please sing along. It's on number 105 in the Glory to God hymnal. If this is not a hymn you're familiar with, I implore you to not turn it off, but maybe hum along or sing along and see if you can learn it because uh, this is just such a beautiful Advent him. People look east. <laughs> Have a great week. God be with you. See you next time.